Good morning and welcome to worship today with Grosio Presbyterian Church Online. I'm Phil Reed, pastor of this assuring congregation. It's great to have you with us. Our theme for the past several weeks has been assurance and we've looked at the scripture readings from John's gospel and other places. We saw two of Jesus' resurrection appearances and then several other readings from particularly John's gospel, that seemed to me even more clear following Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is our assurance. And the symbol that we had for this series of assurance was the sun, the sun in the sky. It is a constant assuring presence that God put at the very center of our lives to communicate to us the depth of the reality of God's assuring presence and love. Today, this is the day the Lord has made. The sun has come up once again because God said, get out there and do it again. And in its light and in its heat, and in the time that we measure by it and the life that it gives to us, we now carve out this time to join together to worship our assuring God.
Scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. Why? To what end? When we pray, we hope, no, we expect God to hear our prayers and to respond to them. We feel comforted by others' prayers for us. Prayer is a way of staying close to God. When Jesus prays for the disciples, he asks God to be with his people now that his own time on earth is done. We rejoice that God is with us on our journey. So let us now worship the ever-present God. here and I am coming to you today to talk about praying. So in our scripture today, 
Jesus is praying for his disciples. So I guess I was kind of wondering, what do people pray for? Hmm, I don't know. Let's ask some people, shall we? So, hey, Mr. Bolton. Yeah. Who do you pray for? Oh, well, I pray for a lot of people. Um, I pray for you, uh, Mrs. Bolton. I pray for my children, Isaac and Sophia, that they make good decisions throughout the day. Um, I pray for Grandma Jay and Grandma Bolton and Grandpa Bolton, my parents. Um, I pray for Uncle Dan and his health and Uncle Angie and his, um, his spiritual growth. I pray for my sister Maggie and her husband and especially right now I pray for their um, grandparents who were involved in a car accident um, not too long ago. Um, I pray for a lot of different folks. Um, sometimes I, I pray that, um, that I make good decisions and that I um, do the right thing and that when things are challenging, I pray for um, God to show me guidance. Hey, Sophia, who are you praying for these days? I am praying for my teachers and my family. Hey, Isaac. Hi, Amy. <laughs> so, hey, who are you praying for these days? Well, I am praying for one of my teachers. Her name's Miss Lomez, and her dad died recently. Um, she's coming back to school on the Monday, um, on this Monday, and I'm just really worried for her well-being, and I hope she's okay. So as for me, I am praying for Isaac. He is going to be graduating in a couple of weeks and headed to college. And I'm going to pray that he makes good choices and meets some awesome people and learns a lot and continues to grow. I'm going to pray for Sophia as she goes to high school that she is going to make good friends and study hard and make good choices and be happy and continue growing into the most awesome person she is already becoming. Um, I'm going to pray for Mr. Bolton and for myself that we have patience and tolerance and love for everyone and that we weather these transitions well with God's help. I'm going to continue to pray for all the people in the world, people who aren't as fortunate as me um, or as you, you know, people that need more help and need an extra measure of God's care. I'm going to pray for my friends and for my extended family, that God continues to watch over all of us. So those are some things we are praying for. I'd love to hear a little bit more from you. What are you praying for today? Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the 17th chapter of John. Listen to these words of Jesus as he prays for his disciples. I spelled out your character in detail to the men and women you gave me. They were yours in the first place, then you gave them to me. And they have now done what you said. They know now beyond the shadow of a doubt that everything you gave me is firsthand from you. For the message you gave me, I gave them, and they took it and were convinced that I came from you. They believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the God-rejecting world, but for those you gave me, for they are yours by right. Everything mine is yours, and yours mine and my life is on display in them. For I'm no longer going to be visible in the world. They'll continue in the world while I return to you. Holy Father, protect them as they pursue this life that you conferred as a gift through me so they can be one heart and mind as we are one heart and mind. 
As long as I was with them, I protected them in the pursuit of the life you gave through me. I even posted a lookout, and not one of them got away, except for the rebel bent on destruction, the exception that proved the rule of Scripture. Now I'm returning to you. I'm saying these things in the world's hearing, so my people can experience my joy completed in them. I gave them your word. The godless world hated them because of it, because they didn't join the world's ways, just as I didn't join the world's ways. I'm not asking that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are no more defined by the world than I am defined by the world. Make them holy, consecrated with the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We love to get away from it all. There is something very tempting about escaping the world in which we live. The travel industry, the real estate business know this. They spend millions of dollars to entice us to visit exotic places, to take luxury cruises, to enjoy fractional ownership of a beautiful condo building on the bay, or to have our own rustic cabin up north in the woods. We love to get away from our, I barely have a moment to breathe world. We love to get away from our, I've got a mortgage payment, car payment, medical payment, Netflix payment. I'm not saving enough for retirement world. We love to get away from our pandemic is almost over, but things sure have changed world. We love to get away from it all. There's something in Christian tradition that may even intensify this desire to escape the world. The world. Christian tradition is filled with attempts to get away from all the clamor and conflict of life in this world. I'm thinking of monasteries, far off places where there are retreat centers, convents, church camps, even in Northern Michigan. Also, something else I've always been interested in, utopian communities in the Midwest. You know, utopian communities are where a town emerged because a group of people wanted to get away from it all and establish a religious community based on certain social values. They tried to create an ideal society. New Harmony, Indiana is one. Amana in Iowa is another. Even in Michigan, Ora Labora in the Thumb. There is the temptation in Christian tradition to separate from the world in order to live above it all, in order to try to live above it all. Jesus addresses this temptation to escape the world at his last supper with the disciples. According to John's gospel, Jesus preaches a sermon at the last supper. We call it the farewell discourse. Part of this discourse is a prayer the priestly prayer of Jesus, that's what that is called. And our reading today from John's gospel is part of Jesus' prayer. Here, we hear Jesus preparing his disciples for life after the crucifixion, which is coming the next day. He prays that they will not be tempted to run away. He prays that they will not try to separate themselves from the powers and principalities of this world, even though this world crucifies Jesus. Jesus knows they will be scared. He knows they will 
want to try to protect themselves, but running away and hunkering down is not the all solution. Jesus prays for an alternative. Instead of escape, Jesus prays for his disciples to live in the real world without succumbing to its values or its pressures. The disciples are to live amid the knotted complexities of this world without getting entangled in them. They are to live in the real world under the protective care of God. Protect is the key word in Jesus' prayer for his disciples. Three times Jesus prays for their protection. One, Holy Father, Jesus prays, protect them so that they may be one as we are one. The world seeks division. The world seeks to separate people into categories and to label them. This is especially true in our world right now. Jesus prays that his disciples would be protected from division and strife, conflict and separation. Jesus prays for their unity. Not that they all have to think alike, believe the same things, agree on all the issues, share the same perspective or vote in the same way. Jesus is not praying for uniformity. He's praying for community. He's praying that despite their individual differences, the disciples will hang together and help one another and continue in relationship and continue in community no matter what. Because Jesus is one with God, Jesus prays for his disciples to be one with each other. Two, Jesus continues, while I was with them, he prays, I protected them, and not one of them was lost. Jesus prays for not one of his disciples to be lost going forward. There are countless ways to get lost in this world. We can get lost by pursuing a certain career, by letting our ambition run wild and by really going for it. And suddenly it's 40 years later and we wonder, what have we been doing all our lives? We can get lost by trying to create the ideal family, doing everything we possibly can do to be perfect. And then suddenly the nest is empty and we find that we're empty too. We can get lost trying to maintain a certain economic or social status, keeping the appearances up. Suddenly the bills are more and the bank account is less. There are countless ways to get lost in this world because there are countless ways this world seeks to diminish our faith and decrease our commitment. Jesus prays for us not to get lost. Jesus prays, I'm not asking you to take them out of this world. I ask you to protect them from the evil one. This is the third prayer of protection. The world is not evil in and of itself because evil things happen in this world. It's just that evil things happen. There are forces at work conspiring against our best interests. Racism is evil. Injustice is evil. Greed is evil. Prejudice is evil. Jesus prays for his disciples to be protected from these and all manners of evil. So three times Jesus prays for his disciples to be protected. Jesus prays that God will care for his disciples with the same loving care that Jesus himself 
has received. Jesus prays for his disciples to receive exactly what he received from the one he calls Father. Jesus prays for you and me because Jesus is our mediator. Because Jesus is fully God and fully human, he is uniquely positioned to be the mediator between God and human beings. Jesus is not half God and half human. He is not God simply appearing to be human. Jesus is fully God, fully human, at one and the same time, in one body. And this makes Jesus our intermediary, our go-between, between God and, and us. So Jesus prays on our behalf, and his prayers for his disciples are a powerful, assuring force. Jesus, our mediator, is as powerful and as assuring as the Son. The Son has been our image of assurance. The speed of light from the Son is the constant by which we measure other constants. The Son wakes us up in the morning, every morning, the setting sun puts us to sleep every night. We measure time by our orbit around the sun. It is as if God placed the sun at the center of our solar system to remind us of God's constant, assuring presence. This is why the sun has had such a prominent place in the original artwork for this sermon series entitled Assurance. We started off with Jesus risen from the dead, suddenly appearing to the disciples in the upper room, even though the doors were locked. And we are assured that nothing stops Jesus from showing up. Then we had this picture of this image of the sun and a fish, and it it was about the resurrected Jesus appearing to his disciples and eating a fish with them to show that he is real. And we are assured that the risen Christ is really here, really with us. Then the image of the son and a shepherd, the resurrected Jesus is our shepherd. We are assured of his guidance. Then the son with vine and branches, the risen Jesus telling us, I am the vine, you are the branches. We are assured in our connection to the risen one and to each other. This was followed by the image of a woman with a heart of love, and perhaps these are her children also in this image, in this painting. It's perfect for Mother's Day. Last week, perhaps our mom was our first best friend. The risen Christ calls us not servants. He doesn't call his servants or his disciples his staff, but he calls them friends. And we are assured because friendship is a especially powerful relationship, our friendship with Jesus and with our friends here. And here's the son in praying hands. The resurrected Jesus prays for us. We are assured because he is our mediator and his prayers are prevailing. The son is our assurance. The son that's in the sky, but more importantly, Jesus, the son of God. Just as God sent Jesus into the world, so Jesus sends his disciples into the world with his prayers. We all need a break from time to time, a vacation, downtime, to sort things out, to think things through, to simply be for a while. You could do that permanently, either literally withdraw from the world or more probably withdraw into yourself, but from time to time, it's fine to get away. 
But Jesus encourages us to live in the real world, the real world with all its complexities, challenges, heartbreaks, messiness, violence, and corruption. The real world that has all these things and also beauty, music, incredible moments, great food, friendships, loves, community. Jesus does not want us to escape the world, but engage the world. Jesus, our mediator, the one who prays for us, sends us out to live in the real world because this is where real life is. can't lie no more of your darkness all my pictures seem to fade to black and white I'm grown tired Time stands still before me Frozen here On the ladder of my life Too late To save my soul from falling a chance and change the way of life but you misread my meaning when I met you close the door Just allow a fragment of your life to walk free. But losing everything is like the sun going down on me.
Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, your goodness is beyond measure. We thank you for the assurance that comes to us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our mediator. He lived to show us how to live. He died to forgive us our sins. He rose again to show us the way to eternal life. And he is with you now, leading us guiding us, and protecting us. We pray, O oh God, for his continued protection. Protect us, O oh God, from getting lost. Protect us, O oh God, from evil in this world. Protect us, O oh God, cover us, that we might know your wholeness, and grace. And may we live in the real world under the assurance of your protection. Life isn't always easy. We are all facing struggles from time to time, challenges from time to time. We seek to be your faithful people and we don't always measure up. Save us, O oh God. Protect us, O oh God. May we find confidence, a proper confidence to live this life, trusting and depending and giving our lives to you. For all who are in extra need this day, for the least, the lonely and the lost, for those suffering injustice, for those suffering homelessness, for those struggling for economic reasons, for those for whom life has gotten really hard and they are struggling with certain psychological factors, certain spiritual factors, we pray for your healing and your protection. Jesus is our mediator, our go-between. He came to reveal you to us and for you to see us through him he is the connection and so we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Jesus sends us out to live in the real world. Not always a great place, I know. It has its challenges, it has its complexities, we all have concerns. Also, it's a wonderful and awe-inspiring place, and who knows what's gonna happen. God loves to surprise us. Jesus sends us out into the real world, but not without his prayers. He prays for us. He prays that we would be protected. And because he is our mediator, we can trust his prayers and live our lives with a proper confidence. We can live our lives with assurance. Because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, these blessings are always with us. They are as constant as the sun.